Okay, good. Guys, welcome to Business School. Today we're gonna to be discussing EOS methodology. EOS stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System, and it is the operating system, if you will, that we use here at the company. This is how we run the company. Uh, so oftentimes you'll see us have certain meetings or use certain words that might be a little strange and you're wondering what those words are. It really comes from this system here, EOS. Um, one of the things I wanted to emphasize is this before we get started. All great businesses have a business operating methodology. Anybody who makes it past being just kind of a small mom and pop operation, it isn't just because they have great, uh, great offering. It isn't just because they're great at customer service. There's usually something else that takes it to another level. There's some sort of X factor. One of those X factors is having an operating system, having a methodology for how you're gonna go about running the business rather than we're just going to make a great product, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's talk about a few things that have influenced our business operating methodology. One of the books I would highly encourage you guys to check out is a book called Scaling Up. It's by a gentleman named Vern Harnish. Vern Harnish happens to be the founder of the Entrepreneurs Organization, or EO. You've probably heard us talk about EO. Both Julian and I are in that organization. Uh, he started that uh, organization. He's since gone on to do a lot of other things. He wrote a book called Scaling Up originally called Mastering the Rockefeller Habits, and he wrote a 2.0 version of that that he called Scaling Up. Scaling Up is a business operating methodology. Uh, we take some of our business operating methodology from Scaling Up. We don't fully follow it though because it's, it's kind of big and academic. It's, it's really for kind of larger companies in my opinion, uh, but we do take some of the things from that book. The other one that's been a huge influence is this book called Uncommon Service by Francis Fry and Ann Morris. Uh, hands down one of the best business books on how to develop your winning attributes as a brand. Uh, highly recommend you check this out. So this particular book influences a certain aspect of our offering and what we do, but it has, it's a very important part of our influence. Finally, a book called Traction. Traction, written by Gina Wickman, teaches EOS. So sometimes you'll hear people refer to EOS as Traction. Traction is just the name of the book. The methodology he teaches in the book is called EOS, which stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System. That is the one that we mostly follow in our business. I would say uh, we follow the system and we sprinkle in a couple of other things from these other books and other learnings and other teachings and just based on our own business experience. So we're probably 95 to 98% on EOS. So the, the entrepreneurial operating system, again, EOS, if you hear us talk about that, it really has these six components that it helps you address as a business. And one of the key things is it helps you address these things in a way that is simply stated. And we're gonna talk about more about that in a moment. Uh, the six components are vision, data, process, traction, issues, and people. We're gonna go into some of these components, but I'm gonna give you a brief overview. Vision is all about understanding what are the big eight questions that you have to answer to know where you're going as an organization. Uh, again, it's just not enough to put out a good product because in today's world, good products can be quickly displaced. A good product can actually go out of business. So what is the vision? What's gonna drive you towards the future? And is it shared by all? That's one of the key components of EOS is making sure you guys, everybody understands what the vision is and it's not just like held by the management team. Data, EOS very much believes in running the business through data. So there's this concept called a scorecard. We're not gonna go deep into the scorecard today. We only have so much time to go over all the components, but the idea of a scorecard is if you were on an island and you had to run your business from the island and the only communication you were to get each week is a scorecard, what kind of data would you need to be able to run your business? and be able to send that courier back with instructions. So you get this scorecard and say, oh, I see these numbers and these metrics. Do I know if the business is healthy now and going to be healthy in the future? And what do these numbers tell me? And could I literally send back instructions from this scorecard? Uh, and then measurables, making sure everybody is aiming for specific things. Uh, process, we, we talk a lot about process. EOS preaches that it's, uh, you document it and have it followed by all. 
the traction is really the, the opposite of vision. And you're, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today, but traction is really about what are you doing in the now? What are you doing today to move things forward? Too many times businesses get caught up in vision and they don't execute, or they get caught up in, in uh, just talking about the issues and wallowing in the issues and taking weeks and weeks and months and months to take action and solve things. EOS is very much about make things happen. That's the traction side. Issues, you probably have heard us talk about issues and you may be going like, what are issues? Am I an issue? We're gonna talk about that today, but essentially EOS preaches that the issues within an organization need to be addressed. <laughs> A said, Kendra's an issue. Kendra, you're not an issue. I can, right. I'm just gonna put your mind at ease right now. Not this week. Not this, <laughs> this week you're not an issue. Um, but it, it's, really about, it's really about confronting those things head on. Too many times in organizations, they let those things just fester and they let them fester. I think I told you guys very in, at the very beginning of us coming together, I believe in straight talk. I believe in addressing things right away front and center because we might be able to, to cut something off at the pass and keep it from becoming some big mountain of drama. Uh, so that's the issues list and we're gonna go into that today. IDS, we're gonna, we're gonna go through what that means, but that means identify, discuss, and solve. So if you hear IDS, identify, discuss, solve, I'm gonna to explain to you guys what that means in a little bit. People, EOS really believes you gotta get the right people, which are the cultural fits, and then you gotta get them in the right seats. Too many times organizations either don't have the right people because they're not the right cultural fit, or they have the right people and they've got them in the wrong seat. They've got them in a role that's not ideal for what their talents are. Does that make sense? So EOS very much preaches a, uh, an annual and quarterly review of are the right people in the right seats? Set people up for success. You guys have heard me too talk a lot about uh, a garden and that our job is to create an amazing nurturing environment so everyone can flourish. But you also heard me talk about weeds, right? And when weeds get in your garden, you gotta get them out. So to this point, if we have people that come into our organization they happen to be weeds. We don't want that to happen. And we're gonna do our best to make sure that we only have flowers come into our organization, right? But sometimes if that happens, we have to address that right away. Uh, and so the, those, are the six, those are the six areas. So let's jump into this a little bit further. If you were to read the book Traction, which I hope you do, if you were to start studying the methodology, you'll notice there's about 20 different tools. They call them tools in the whole system. We're not going to go through all 20 today. We just don't have time to tackle all 20. But what we are going to do is we're going to address some of the big ones that are probably most visible right now to you guys. And some of the ones that may start to trickle into your world. And we hope to start exposing this methodology across the entire company, not just on the leadership team. First, we're going to talk about this thing called the VTO. The VTO stands for Vision Traction Organizer. We're going to talk about that. We're gonna talk about the meeting pulse. What are the meetings we have and why do they exist? We're gonna talk about the level 10 meeting specifically, which is one of the meetings in the meeting pulse. We'll talk about the issue solving track, which dovetails into the level 10. And we're gonna talk about rocks. So we're gonna cover those four or five things here in the rest of the presentation today. This is a really important point. Every great strategy is stated simply. It's been said, if you ask a business what their strategy is, if they can't explain it clearly in one sentence, they don't have a strategy. So EOS very much believes this and puts tools in place to where you don't have to have this, this big system that's convoluted, that's really complex. They believe you can run a world-class business with strategy stated simply. So their version of that in EOS is this thing called a Vision Traction Organizer, VTO for short. So if you hear us say VTO, that's what we're referring to. The VTO is really all about what is the company vision, which is future, and traction, which is about the now, and how do we state that simply? In fact, in traction, there's actually a VTO document that is literally two pages. One side uh, is vision, the other side is traction. And it's stated very simply. Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna first show you guys 
a, the template that EOS gives that gives you when you start studying this. I'm going to show you the template, and then we're going to look at ours specifically. So in on the vision side, talks about core values. So as you guys know, we've been going through the core values exercise together. Once we define those and get those nailed, those go there. Core focus, purpose and passion. What is our niche? When EOS refers to niche, what they're saying is, what is your area of, area of expertise specialty? It's not necessarily what markets you're going after, it's how are you applying your skill sets in a way that's unique. The 10 year target, kind of like that big, that big goal. And then the marketing strategy. Who are, you going to, who are you going to be targeting? What are the unique value propositions you're going to bring them? What's the proven process you bring to that market or to those markets? And what kind of guarantee can you offer them? And then three-year picture. And the cool thing about the three-year picture is the goal of that is to state it in very vivid visual terms. Again, we're going to go over ours here in a moment. Uh, then the, if you were to flip it over, there's the traction side. And the traction side is what are you working on this year, this quarter? What, it, what is happening in the now? If you're trying to get to that long-term vision, what are you working on right now? So on the left side, you have a one-year plan. This is probably the most simply stated one-year plan you will ever see. If you ask any company, show me your one-year plan, you're probably going to get reams and reams of paper, not in EOS. EOS, again, state it simply and take action. So the one-year plan is uh, what, what revenue and profit are you aiming for? What measurables are you aiming for, such as Okay, you may say we want to do $10 million, but what would be a cool measurable you're going after, such as 100 recurring service clients? That might be a, a key measurable that you want to track. And then what are some of the goals for the year? The one year breaks down into what are called rocks. Rocks are about the quarter. So in order to, tackle, in order to accomplish that one year plan, what do you have to be accomplishing this quarter? So whenever you see this traction document where it says rocks, it's about only about this quarter. It's not about next quarter. It's not about six months from now. It's only what's going on right now in this 90 day period. And you have something very similar. What revenue are you aiming for? What profit are you aiming for? What measurables are you aiming for? And what are the rocks for the quarter? We're gonna go into rocks a little bit more in detail here in a moment. So if you're a little confused by what a rock is, I'm gonna be covering that. And then finally, the issues list. Now, when I show you guys our VTO, there are some nomenclature changes that we've made to better align with how we're running the business. So for example, when you see, see ours, the issues list, we're calling that rock backlog, and I'll explain to you why in a moment. So let's first, before we dig into ours, let's actually talk about what are rocks. Rocks are, are the three to seven most important things you must get done in the next 90 days. Employees will typically have one to three individual rocks each quarter, while leadership team members will have typically three to seven individual rocks. You can think of rocks like projects. Think of a rock like a project. A rock isn't something that you can get done with one or two tasks in one or two weeks. A rock is a serious project that addresses one of the major concerns of the organization for that quarter. So for example, let's say one of our major concerns for the quarter is, um, our revenue is too heavily weighted by one or two clients. We've got one or two clients that are big and they kind of dominate our revenue. That's a huge concern and it's something we've identified as a team. We have to fix that. We have to diversify our revenue. So then what we would do is we would have a discussion and say, what are all the things we can do to start addressing that issue? And we might come up with a project that says, okay, we need to be going to our current client base and we need to have some add-on services. Or we might need to run a campaign so we can pick up five more clients in this sector to start to diversify our revenue. Because right now, those two clients represent a liability. Does that make sense? So as we meet and discuss, that may bubble up as like, there's nothing more important in our organization right now than diversifying our revenue. Because if we don't, every day we live with a liability. Does that make sense? So when you identify that as a major issue, you then determine what's the project to address that issue. What's the project we're gonna tackle as an organization to hopefully make that issue go away. And so you can think of that as a project. It spans one quarter long. Okay, so now what are issues? So a lot, a lot of times one of the big confusions when you start running this system here is, well, what's an issue and what's a rock? Because 
rocks come from issues. So when does it stay an issue and when is it a rock? So we're gonna talk about that. What are actually issues? Issues are obstacles that must be faced to execute the vision. A company's success is directly proportionate to its ability to solve the issues that arise. So a moment ago, you guys heard me mention that a lot of companies, they just kind of let issues fester and they take way too long to address the issues. And this is why the bigger companies get, the longer it takes to address the issues because they often do issue resolving by committee or it's this person's problem, not mine. And so as a smaller company, we have the ability to be very nimble and fast and make these kinds of things go away. There are two types of issues. There are long-term and short-term issues. So let's talk about that. So some issues can be solved with a task or two in one to two weeks. Those are short-term and they're just simply issues and they're triaged on a week to week basis, right? Just simple things that, hey, um, I give you an example of an issue that's not a long-term thing. Uh, client Acme Corporation is uh, not paying their bill and it's become now a leadership team issue because they're pushing back and they're, they're giving Sherry a hard time and she's done everything she can. So now that's an issue. And so we decide to discuss it and we solve it right there in that meeting. What are the action items? What are we going to do to make that go away? It's not a project. We don't need to work on it for 90 days. It might be Julian, please make a phone call to that client, clear it up so we can just get this off of our plate and make it go away. And Julian says he's not gonna call. So someone's gonna have to call. Uh, some issues will require more, more tasks, more focus and more time. These are long-term and they're put in what's, what we call our rock backlog for quarterly rock consideration. So if we in a meeting say, uh-oh, this particular thing we just identified, we can't solve it in just one or two tasks. This isn't going to go away in one or two weeks. This is a bigger thing. What we do is we take that and we put it in the rock backlog. Because one of the things that EOS preaches, which at first most business people like really like struggle with, they, they kind of get anxiety over it, is as those issues come up and you realize that's a new rock potentially, you're supposed to set it aside. You don't tackle it. Because what you've already done is you've already defined the rocks for this quarter and there's nothing more important than the rocks you've already committed to. Does that make sense? So sometimes if you guys give us feedback and we realize here's something that's rock worthy, here's something that's big and you might, and you might wonder like, well, why aren't we working on it? We may not work on it yet because we have our current rocks we're committed to. And the key thing with this type of methodology is get less done with higher quality. See, the problem with most organizations is they wanna to try to get this many things done, but they do it with this much quality. Like nothing really truly gets done with high quality uh, that makes it go away forever. Instead, what EOS preaches is get this much done with this much quality. Does that make sense? So when that potential rock comes up and we go like, uh-oh, that can't be solved with a task or two, that can't be solved in a week or two, we're gonna put that on the rock backlog. So the next time we go to define rocks, we can determine, is that one of the number one things we need to be tackling? Does that make sense? Okay, so our VTO currently is a work in progress. We've been together a whole whopping month. So uh, a lot of times organizations can take a whole year or more to work on their VTO. We're pretty savvy and we're pretty experienced at this stuff, so we're gonna be able to accelerate that, but ours is a work in progress. So here we have our core values written down. These are a work in progress still, as we know. Uh, we're, we're writing up new ones. I told you, promised you guys I would have them at the end of this week, which I will have. I'm working on right after this meeting, I promise. The core focus, you're gonna notice that we actually have a couple of extra things in our co core focus that's not in the EOS template. Uh, the couple of things we've added is something called a mental model. Mental model is something that I've, I've preached to every single person and every company that I've done branding projects with. And it's basically, how do you complete the sentence we are in the business of? And the reason uh, that I feel it's so important is it focuses, focuses us on the outcome that our clients are after, right? Like we may be do, being doing digital marketing, we may be passionate about the triple, triple bottom line, that's our passion, but what's the outcome people are buying from us? And that's really important that we understand that. You've heard me talk a lot about Starbucks and how Starbucks has the third place. That's their mental model. As a great company, we also need to know our mental model, so we've added that there. One phrase strategy, that's something that frankly we're still working on, we're still pondering. A one phrase strategy comes from the book Scaling Up, 
And it's basically this. What is the way you do business such that it's giving you a competitive advantage in the marketplace and driving more profitability than your competitor? One of the great examples that Vern Harnish gives uh, in the book Scaling Up, or in his talks, I don't remember where I, he where I heard it from him, but he talks about the company Ikea. Now, Ikea is essentially a furniture company. Most furniture companies don't make a whole lot of money. One of the big reasons is that they ship a lot of air. Right? When you ship a container of sofas and chairs and tables, there's a lot of air in that container. Ikea said, we're going to only do flat pack furniture because most of our furniture will break down into a flat pack box. So when we ship that container of furniture, we ship very little air. We're able to spread out shipping costs uh, across a larger uh, quantity of furniture. Does that make sense? You get to spread it out across more units. So their one phrase strategy is simply stated flat pack furniture. And that becomes the, the thing that drives them to be way more profitable and able to outgrow their competitors. So as a company, we're still working on that. There are a number of ways we could go with that. And I think in a, a business like ours, I don't think that's easily solved, but that's something that we're thinking about and pondering. Uh, Ten-year target, we've uh, tentatively defined as a 20% net operating profit, own a building at some point, uh, and have a world-class operation. The marketing strategy, completely blank right now. Ariane and I are, are actively working on this section. If you guys noticed when, I, when we have our one-on-ones and I say, what kind of industries are you happy about? What kind of solution makes for a great client? I'm asking because of this, because we're actively filling this in right now and trying to understand who are the target markets that we're gonna point our brand at? What kind of brand promises do we need to make to those people so that they fall in love with us and see us as the only solution for them? Does that make sense? So when you guys have those questions and I'm asking those things, it's specifically related to this area here. Uh, I won't go into three year picture because that's something I'm working on and hope to be able to give you guys a vivid story here in the next few weeks on what that looks like. If we go over to the traction side, this is about the one year plan. So the future date being the end of this year. And then we identify just a couple of goals for the year. Primarily, it's a successful integration and launch a kick-ass new brand. Like those are the two biggest things for the remainder of the year. If we had done this at the beginning of the year, we would have a lot more than that together as a combined company. Okay, so how does that break down into this quarter's rocks? So we sh I shared this with you guys the other day, but just as a reminder, our rocks for this quarter are a solid first draft of the VTO, which is this document here, uh, the accountability chart through the end of the year, that's owned by Julian, identify the next two critical hires, that's owned by Joe. Uh, Ariane's going to be uh, developing a plan that addresses the merger messaging and the two brand coexistence and the go to market. DJ is owning the sales to finance production flow. So that way we can all quickly be on the same page for how things are sold, how they're brought in, how they get billed, followed up on, et cetera. And Sherry's developing and executing the employee integration plan to include a kickoff audit tasks, et cetera. Uh, so you remember how I told you on our uh, VTO template, we didn't call it the issues list, we call it the rock backlog. The reason we did that is because most people when they're on EOS have confusion as to what's the issues versus what are the future rocks. So we just cleared up the confusion. If it's on this list, it's rocks for future consideration. Things that are issues that are bigger that we know are not just part of the week to week issues list. So for example, team rocks. I would love for the team to start running this and also having, I would love for you guys to start having your own rocks. Uh, define required training and certifications for all positions. What are those? Now that we're together, what does that look like? Uh, HubSpot, how are we using it for our brand? Um, exception reporting, so as a, a, a management team, what are the reports we need to see that are automated so that way any of the red flags that potentially exist in the organization just automatically show up from a data standpoint. That's called exception reporting. Uh, what is our sales approach? When we get tactical opportunities versus strategic opportunities, what, are, what is our approach there? That needs to be defined. Um, how can we sell based on capacity? I won't read all of these to you, but you guys can see what they are. Uh, let's talk about the meeting post. Most meetings suck. Here's why meetings in the EOS framework don't suck. Um, there's a meeting pulse. 
which means same day, same time, same agendas. It, it's like clockwork. It happens regularly. It's the same exact agenda. We don't have to invent a new agenda every time we do one of those meetings. It's the same thing every time. There's an emphasis on momentum, meaning kill the issues, get rid of the issues, make them go away, take action and make things happen. Never miss your, never miss your weekly meeting, your quarterly or your annual. And also a focus on less is more, which is about focusing on quality. So that's one of the, there's a three main reason why EOS meetings are really effective and why they don't suck. Let's talk about the meeting pulse. There are three major meetings in the EOS methodology. One is an annual meeting, which is two days. There's a quarterly meeting, which is one day. And then there's the weekly level 10 meeting, which is 90 minutes every week. At the annual meeting, it's two days, it's offsite. What we do in this particular meeting is we review the previous year, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, we look at uh, our strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. I'm sure you guys know what a SWOT is, right? And we also look at any issues that are on the board and outstanding. We look at our VTO, review it. Is it still accurate? Is the 10 year still right? Is the three year still right? Is this still our vision? We define next quarter's rocks and we spend the rest of the time tackling issues and making them go away. And what you'll see is that kind of uh, format, that kind of agenda is pretty consistent in all the EOS meetings. So if we look at the quarterly planning meeting, it looks very, very similar. So this is one day, it's not two days. Also off site, instead of reviewing the previous year, we're reviewing the previous quarter. Again, review the VTO, define next quarter's rocks and spend the rest of the day tackling the issues and making them go away. The weekly level 10 meeting. So if you guys see us meet every Monday at 3 p.m. like clockwork, 3 to 4.30, one of the things, one of the rules of the weekly level 10, start on time, end on time, same day, same agenda, same time, period. And so that's 90 minutes, that's here. We look at our scorecard. Scorecard are those critical numbers that I discussed earlier. We look at each of the rocks. We do any customer and employee headlines. So remember when I talked about that um, uh, Acme Corporation who's like kind of refusing to pay? That might be a headline, okay? Uh, we might have an employee issue come up, such as we have an employee that's like going through a real tough time, their grandmother died. And so this particular week is gonna be rough for them. Or if you've seen them, they're having a rough time, this is why. Right? So that's why sometimes where we have some privacy about certain issues here, it's because there are sometimes certain issues about people on our team that just wouldn't be fair for everyone to know. Does that make sense? So there's, there's really not a lot here that's uh, too much of a surprise to anyone, but occasionally some issues like that might come up. And that's something that we do keep private so that way we keep e each person's confidentiality, you know, don't make it everyone else's business if that makes sense. More times than not, the headlines are about customers if they come up. It's rarely you guys, Kendra. It's rarely you. <laughs> uh, we also, we also uh, review the to-do list. The to-do list is the to-do list from the previous meeting. It's not like my day-to-day to-dos or Julian's day-to-day to-dos or anyone else's on the leadership team. It's from the previous meeting. What were the action items? We review those. And then we spend the rest of the time identify, discuss, and solve the issues. All the items up above the IDS section are literally five minutes each. All we do with each one is, is this number on or off? Is your rock on track or off track? Uh, what are the headlines? Did you get your to-do list item done from last week? Yes or no. We're not discussing it. All we're doing is yes or no, on track, off track. If it's off track or if it's not done or if the scorecard number's off or we have a, uh, an employee or customer headline that's, that's a bigger issue, we drop those down to that IDS section. We just go, okay, boom, goes down, boom, just goes down. If you watched the video that I sent you guys on this weekly level 10 meeting, he does an amazing job of explaining that exact process. All the items leading up to that, you don't discuss them. This is one of the major reasons that most companies that have a weekly meeting, a weekly management meeting, is why most of them suck and they never get anything done because they'll come across a, a, an issue and all of a sudden they'll just go head first into discussing and solving that issue. And that issue honestly may not even be one of the most important things, but then you spend an hour talking about uh, the water cooler guy forgot to come last week. And here you are talking about how much of a pain that was and what are we gonna do and it happened, like that may not even be one of the top things you should be discussing. So that's why they emphasize get all the issues grouped, then triage them and then finally conclude. 
I want to role play that out for you guys so you can see how that sounds and looks. All right, Julian, best business news, best personal news. Uh, we got a good applicant for SEO. And awesome. We're looking good. And personally, I got my car fixed. Nice. Uh, best business news, uh, able to rally the team around uh, a business school kind of interest, which is awesome. Super excited about that. Uh, best personal news. Uh, had an awesome chance to go out with my wife last night and have like a real adults night out. It was pretty cool. Uh, okay, scorecard review. So we're looking at the scorecard. Um, Julian, I notice here uh, sales, the uh, number of um, free consults is down, right? Uh, Frank, um, you know, whatever, like the AR, AR, our AR 30 plus, meaning the, 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 peop the money we're waiting on is shot real high. Like we don't want that to be over, let's say 50,000, maybe it's at 100,000, okay? Drop that down to the issues list. Literally take five minutes to do that. That's it, we just look at those numbers, we don't discuss it, we move on. Okay, rock review. Uh, Julian, your rock on track or off track? On track, 40%. 40%, 40 Ariane, on track or off track with your rock? On track, 25%. 25. DJ, on track, off track with your rock? On track, 20%. Okay, Joe, Sherry, Frank. On track, 60%. Boom. If, Ariane, do me a favor, say off track. Ariane? Off track. Is it an issue? Yes. Okay. All I'm gonna do at that point is we're gonna drop it to the issues list. Ariane's rock, off track. We don't discuss it. We just, boom, it's off track. Now we go on to the next session. Customer employee headlines. Julian, any customer employee headlines? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Emma's giving us a hard time. <laughs> Anything? Nope. That we need to find an infographic designer, and I don't think we have one in our network. Okay. Boom. Issue, right? We don't discuss it. DJ, any customer employee headlines? Awesome. Uh, one of the examples I gave earlier would be we have an employee who's got a, a sick grandfather and they're having to tend to them. Boom, that's a headline, right? Okay, we move on. Uh, To-do list. Uh, I'm gonna go A, B, C for each of you. Julian, A, done or not done? Done. B? Almost done, we'll be done later today. Is it an issue? No. Uh, C? Done. A? Done. B? Done. C? A, is it, you on track? Okay. B, done. C, done. okay, cool. And mine are uh, done, not done, and done. Now here's the thing, if a not done on the to-do list is on there for, for two weeks, it's automatically an issue. issue uh, action items from these meetings have to be done in less than two weeks. Again, emphasis on momentum and making things happen. So that means like as a leadership team, if I or Julian or anyone else is, are not getting our to-dos done, we have to discuss it. And we're literally gonna discuss why is your to-do not done? Because it could potentially be a rock in disguise. It could be a rock in disguise or it just could be we, just, we committed to action, why aren't you taking action, right? So that kind of accountability, I want you guys to understand, happens at the very top. With our leadership team, we do not let each other get away with not achieving the things we committed to. Does that make sense? So I might go not done and it's been on there two, three weeks now. Automatically issue. Does that make sense? Boom, okay. We've done that. We've spent a total of 20 minutes of the 90 minute meeting, 20, 25 minutes of the 90 minute meeting. The next 60 minutes, we're going to look at the issues list. So all those things that we said were dropping to the issues list, plus the issues list that we carried forward from the previous week become this big inventory. And then the next thing we do is, are there any issues on here that we can solve really, really fast? We're only gonna give those five minutes. Because again, we don't wanna spend our, our valuable time solving the water cooler issue or whatever, right? Or the infographic thing. Like that's probably not a high thing, but I might go, Ariane, I think that's fast, I've got someone for you. Boom, done. Action item, Frank send Ariane an infographic designer. Done, that's the action, solved, okay? Once we do that for five minutes and solve the quick things, we then say, 
what are the top three things that are the biggest issues here now on this list, right? One of them might be that employee who's got a sick grandfather and it's affecting their work that week and we'll discuss that. And so it might be, so let's discuss that. Uh, Ariane, what, uh, what's going on? You, you've got someone who's... Yeah, someone um, needs to go out of town for two days this week, and I want to make sure that we're supporting them, but there's also these other deliverables that have to be done. So let's figure out how we can either jump in and take over the work, or if we need to bring in a freelancer, what, whatever needs to happen. Is this stuff we can postpone until they come back, or...? Uh, Joe, do we have anyone on the team who can step in and do that? Uh, just throw it on Kevin's plate. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. So the action items are you're going to check with the client, see if we have some more time. Joe, you're going to assign that one task to Kendra and see if she can get it done. Boom. Two action items, two to-dos. Now go on the to-do list. You see how that works? So now that issue, guess what we get to do? Solved. Now that's not saying it may not creep back up. Does that make sense? Like the actions we, we are taking may not fully make it go away, but we're gonna make our best decision in that moment to help the situation make it go away. And we're gonna try to help this employee do what we can. Is there anything we need to do from a support standpoint? Is there anything we need to do to make things easier on her this week? Cool, so Cherry can handle, ask her to handle flowers, and then you're gonna handle lunch. Boom, two more to-do items, you, you see that? So we literally document those things. So then next week, I'm going to say, did you get lunch sent? Did you get the flowers set up? Did you assign the, did you talk with Kendra? And we're holding each other accountable to the decisions we make. All right, boom, so we've got that one solved, right? And so we'll do that with each of the issues. And I will tell you, this has been the, in my, 20 plus years of working, right? 25 years of being in the workforce. This is absolutely the most effective format to running meetings and making things happen. Cool. Finally, what we'll do at the end after we spend 60 minutes just tackling and murdering as many issues as we can, we might come across one where it's a new one that's added and we might go, oh wow, after identifying it and really peeling it back, the thing we now realize, it's a rock. That means to really solve that, it's a project. So then we're gonna take that one and we're gonna throw it on the rock backlog and get it out of our weekly issues list. Does that make sense? Finally, at the end, we conclude. And so what we do with the conclusion is we recap the to-dos. And so we'll say, okay, Ariane, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. Joe, you're gonna do this. And we go through everyone's to-dos from that meeting and make sure everyone understands what their action items are. Uh, the final thing we do is we say, are there any communications that are required uh, to give to the team as a result of our actions and decisions today. Did we make a decision that requires that we need to communicate to the team about something we decided? So we may make a decision about, I don't know, the water cooler guy, right? Let's give the example. We have to communicate to the team, hey, this is changing on this day. You will no longer have this. We're gonna replace it with this. So then we'll document who's going to make the communication, how will they communicate, email, at the Monday meeting, through Slack, and when they're gonna get it done by. Okay. Finally, the last thing we do is we go around and we ask each person to give the meeting a rating on a scale of one to 10. Julian? Nine. Arianne? Eight. Joe? We were late, so I knock off a point. And Julian started talking about his dog for too long, so I knock off a point, so it's eight. The dog we Yeah, we got the fight we had over it. <laughs> so we got an eight. DJ? Eight. eight. I'll give it a, a nine. And so our goal is to always have like nines and tens. Like we want to strive for really high quality meetings where we're, we're making really good decisions. We're taking action. We're holding each other accountable. We start on time. We stop on time. Which is why it's called a level 10 meeting. Which is why it's called perfect level 10 meeting. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> and like Frank, Frank said, you know, this is a five minute section. Like we time it with a timer for five minutes. So yeah. And usually the reason that a meeting will be given a lower score is because we started later, we got sidetracked and spent too long on the section and didn't adhere to the, to the agenda. Uh, and that's 
the level 10 meeting. That's literally when you see us every every Monday, 3 p.m. on the on the nose. And if you hear me going, guys, get in here. We're going to start It's because we're dead serious about keeping the consistency, keeping the quality really high. Um, what when I say that my goal is to have everyone in the company running EOS, that means having departments running their own level 10, having you guys run your own level 10 meetings. And it wouldn't be 90 minutes, it would be 60 minutes, but it would be the exact same agenda. You guys would do the exact same things and run your own area of the business as if it's yours and empower you guys to just make it world-class. Does that make sense? Cool.